Hey everybody, thanks very much for coming back to the Pigs Day tonight and uh, we are very lucky tonight, we have uh, Mr Flat Earth himself, we have Mark Sargent. <laughs> If, uh, I don't know if I'm actually Mr. Flat Earth, but thank you, thank you. I'll I'll take it for now. Well, as it goes, you would definitely be one of the ones that has been going for one of the for a longer period of time. Like obviously, there's a lot of flat earthers out there at the minute that are popping up left, right, and center. But uh, I would definitely yeah. say you would, would be one of the original at uh, this time around. You know the influx. Of yeah, uh, you know I'm one of the oldest one. I mean I'm older anyway, but I'm one of the people that have been in the longest, and I've been only doing it for five years. Hmm. so i mean but but so yeah when people are talking it's like oh how you been you know how long you been in it's like oh i've been in for two years three years yeah i've been in for a whole five years yeah so but i usually start the show with what brought you to onto the internet what brought you onto doing this but i think flat earth would probably take precedence so you know what was it that uh, threw you down that line threw you down that direction uh the thing that threw me down was was literally conspiracy boredom more than anything else uh and by that i mean i had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could ever think of and i don't consider myself necessarily a tinfoil hat guy um in fact i grew up very very naive on a on a rural island north of seattle in the united states and when my first conspiracy i even looked at was jfk the movie you know from the early 90s i saw it in the theater and from then on you know for the next 20 something years I, I got into, you know, different conspiracies and, and it's like, wow, people can lie. Yeah. People do lie for money. Go figure. Mm. And then I realized, you know, how, how big it was and uh, how, you know, so many different aspects of different conspiracies. And I had an opinion and then, but con Flat Earth, nobody wants to look at it. Everybody hates it. Um, you become a Flat Earther because you try to disprove it. And I did, you know, I, I sat down and I said, oh, I can blow this thing away in a weekend back in 2014 and then realized by the beginning of 2015 I couldn't I mean I couldn't I couldn't prove the globe in a court of law I could create reasonable doubt in it and that's really what it comes down to and then I said you know what I, I give up trying to prove the globe I'm just going to make a series of videos called it flat earth clues put it out on the internet held my breath and waited to see if any academics would call me and, and say okay here's where you here mm -hmm. where you blew it here's where you screwed it up and instead 2015 just took off where people were different subject matter experts from branches of the military and pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers and everybody you could think of started contacting me and then the general public started contacting me and media and saying wow this is really really interesting and then it just it just blossomed after that uh you know in in 2016 we had neil degrasse tyson go after um, rapper bob and in 2017 you know we had a lot of people in the sporting world and in 2018 we had mad mike in, you know the beginning of the whole mad mike thing yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the rocket scientist uh, or i'm sorry the um just the, the homemade man. astronaut yeah <laughs> yeah rocket rocket man as it were and then uh you know 2019 which we just finished up i mean we did i did conferences in i did conferences in in uh auckland stockholm uk los angeles calgary canada south carolina um dallas texas and it was just incredible i couldn't even go to them all could not could not physically go mm -hmm. to the mall and uh did commercial in australia and just, where where we go from there and i i told people back in 2019 i said you wait 20 2020 is gonna get weird it is gonna be really really strange and not just because of flat earth and here we are <laughs> the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse yeah. you can hear them over the hill and uh, the United States is officially closed right now, which is weird even talking about it. Uh, so anyway, so I'm sorry, there's my long drug out answer for that. No, 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 that's exactly it, man. We want to know, like, uh, so you would have, you're not a tinfoil hat, but would you have considered yourself a conspiracy not before this? No, 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 not at all. I mean, I've got my favorites, yeah. but for me, for me, a conspiracy has to be something that I would be willing to, if I could, if I agreed with the people that were doing the conspiracy, you know, it's like, okay, could I have done this conspiracy better than them? If I couldn't have, if I agree, it's like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. Then yeah, then then I considered it a, a conspiracy, you know, I ticked it off in my book and said, yep. I mean, like JFK, a uh, perfect example. Um, you know, people's oh sad JFK, you know, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I remember I've told people this. I go, he was a long-term problem. 
plain and simple. People forget that you know he was he was assassinated in '63, and then in, but '64 was an election year, and he would have gotten it. I mean, Jesus himself would have had a hard time beating him in the polls, <laughs> and he, he would have run from '64 to '68, and then his brother um, Robert would have gone '68 to '72, and then gotten reelected '72 to '76. That's a long term problem. That's 16 years of Kennedys right there. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And at that point, they may have even forgotten um, Ted Kennedy. So if you're the powers that be, you know, the authority is like I like to call them. Sorry, <laughs> they, they're not that patient. They're like, no, because you have to either, you either beat them legitimately. You know, it's like, OK, we have a candidate and maybe fudge the election numbers or you just take care of them. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to, to conspiracies, you know, 9-11, uh, I'll, I'll give you a we'll, we'll rattle up off a few really quick for you. 9-11 people say, oh, you know, 9-11 wasn't an inside job. OK, tell me about building seven. Plain and simple, a 50 story building that was not hit by a plane or really any debris and it burned a fire in the basement for five hours and then the building just gave up its will to live. Mm -hmm. And nobody, in fact, at least half of the Americans that I've talked to don't even know that even happened. Um, Sandy Hook, another one, which is uh, very controversial, I, I, very controversial. I, it's very controversial, Sandy Hook. Oh, yeah, very controversial. I don't even like bringing it up most of the time, but I, I will in this case because why not it's the end of the world right the uh which is th <laughs> think about it this way and i i offer i said i'll give you know in your case because you're out in you're you're in ireland right i'm in northern ireland yeah okay perfect i'll give a thousand pounds to anyone that can show me a 10 second video of a child being carried out of sandy hook thousand pounds first one show me 10 second video clip i'm gonna say it one more time video clip because there was only three still shots taken of anything with kids ever and yet the traffic help helicopters showed up immediately and they're hovering for hours, you know, filming, filming, filming. Nobody came out of that school at any given time. And I, I keep trying to remind people, like, look, you know how long it takes 600 kids, grade schoolers to be evacuated from a school? You got to go room to room. You don't know how many shooters there are. It would take forever the parents there's only one road well, in the parents we'll move on from that sandy hook's an awful controversial bad topic for a lot of people you know so yeah anything else well i mean it, tug it tugs on a lot of heartstrings for for women mostly i mean you know even friends i have you know they get it's like oh you can't talk about it. it's too it's too emotional those poor children i'm going eh. well it's controversial so, you know we'll, we'll leave it at that and uh, yeah. okay uh anyway what, what uh, else you got right well i have a few questions we'll work down through it i heard I heard when you were growing up that you were kicked out of Western University Bellingham. Would that be correct? Yes. Do you yes. want to go Western... into the story of that? Because I heard the reason why. Do you want to tell the people the reason why? Oh, sure, sure. No, I don't mind. Um, as a matter of fact, in full disclosure, because I, I didn't want anyone to you know dig up any dirt on me. Um, the very first podcast I ever did, um, my own podcast, which was on um, True Frequency Radio, is called Strange World. The very first episode is called Fireworks. And, and the reason is, is because I used to, I grew up, when you live in a wet area, you know, kind of like Ireland in a way, when you grow up in a wet area with a lot of fireworks because of the whole 4th of July, American independence thing, there's a lot of black market or gray market fireworks. And I was good at chemistry. And so I made some of my own fireworks. And I did so not only when I was, you know, in high school, but then when I got to university and then made them for different shows and then i sort of just started selling them to the um native american reservations that were here because the the native american reservations in the united states have a lot to the they we kind of feel bad for them because of what we did so we give them all sorts of perks you know we don't make them pay sales taxes on stuff or federal tax you know because they can sell cigarettes tax-free they can sell alcohol tax-free um they can fish off season they can open up, up, up casinos on their land mm -hmm. without doing anything special and they can also sell fireworks uh and they can bypass a lot of the laws and so i would sell fireworks to them and i did that for several years and but i did this on campus which probably wasn't the best thing in the world and i hired student students as labor to do this <laughs> uh and um yeah it's the the full story you guys can listen to it i mean it takes me a couple hours ah, to do yeah, um yeah. but it's called fireworks on on strange world 
And but the short version was I ended up getting getting nailed for it. And uh, the, you know, the, the government came down on me and, and said it's it, the, the laws are a little different here. Um, in fact, it's funny because it's part of Kennedy. You know, it's part of the Child Protection Act, mm -hmm. which you're not supposed to make firecrackers any bigger than a certain size with a certain amount of powder in them. And, you know, because, you know, you don't want kids losing their fingers. And so but I, you know, and so when you make those, you can sell them for a premium. Uh, to, to the Native Americans and they sell them for a premium, you know, under the table to, yeah. to people. And so I got hit for it. And uh, yeah, it was it was not fun. But at the same time, I was so young that, it, you know, I, I got kind of a slap on the wrist and told me to, to, to move along and never, ever do it again. Now, if I did it a second time, yeah, it would be um, it'd be super bad. So. Well, there now that we have a, a rough idea of, of who you are, a wee bit of your past and stuff, uh, Flat Earth, there is yeah. a lot of different versions out there. Yeah. Would you explain your point of view and what, like, do you think there's a dome? Do you think there's an ice Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll use the, um, I wish I had Chris Pontius's model. It's in my baggage right now, but I'll use the other model, which is, yeah, you're, you're basically living in a giant snow globe with walls and a floor and a ceiling. Looks sort of like that. Although the white area on the outside, which would be Antarctica, would be much, much thicker. Uh, so, but this is kind of a convenient shape. You know, it's the size. This was made by yeah. a company out in Italy, of all things. But yeah, so we're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And um, you're living basically in the inside of what uh, DITRH loves to call, to call the Antarctic Basin. Uh, all the other continents kind of look like they normally would. Uh, in fact, if you're wondering why, where you've seen this image before, this is exactly the layout of the UN flag, which I also think is interesting because the UN flag doesn't have Antarctica in it. Um, and the, you know, the, as far as the sky goes, yeah, we're covered in, in my model anyway, and this represents the majority of the flat earthers, we're covered by a dome and we're living in a pressurized system. And the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon are inside here with us. Very, very small and very, very close. Uh, the stars and the, and the planets would be just lights in the sky. The sun and the moon would be unique lights in the sky. And that's basically what you're looking at. Very, very simple. You don't have to, and, and if you're wondering, it's like, oh, what about space? It's like, who told you there was space? <laughs> if space can be faked, you can do this in a planetarium all day. So, so would you say that the International Space Station is real? I would say it's real only in that uh, you can use the tracking software and you can see something flying overhead. And so I've been I've been fond of saying this for years, which is, OK, is the space station real? Well, there's something flying up there. Are there any people inside it? Hell no, there's no people inside it. Uh, the interior and the reason I say this is because the interior production value, what they're showing you on in the interior of that space station never made sense from the beginning but because most of the general public including me you know I, i'm not some whiz when it comes to you know physics and engineering and chemistry and all that um but most people don't know anything about physics and so when it comes to the inside of that space station everything is wrong everything is absolutely wrong i mean look up just the obvious stuff like why they have hair to begin with why you know, they should be all be clean shaven and yet the women have their hair done in hairspray why, that why would they like need to be clean why would they have to have oh no the, fil the filter systems in fact um i had an email just from a, a uk submarine guy just the other day submarines would run basically the same sort of systems that the, the international space station would be with the exception is that the the pressure is coming in from the outside whereas the international space station the pressure is pushing in from the inside but they say that like they're not even allowed to um uh do to to grow beards and shave them you know with uh you know, like beard clippers because it'll clog the system and that's that's in gr a gravity environment you know supposedly um but what i'm saying is is that the any sort of situation like that especially in zero g it'd be no different than a swimming pool so like woman with long hair you know hair breaks off you that's just floating around that gets into the fil filtration system and you're in trouble and everybody's got freaking hair except for the the bald guy scott kelly you wouldn't you would never let people with hair but that's not the point the point is the women are allowed to have long hair which would you'd never ever allow and they put it they permit they permit straight up it looks like the bride of frankenstein and that was just the last thing you would do i mean and if you're, if I if you're trying ask, to... though, all these things that you're saying though they are can't be this can't be that can't be the other have you got 
any you know proof that would lean towards yours rather more so than saying this can't be something have you got anything oh you mean like oh, oh like my best like my best arguments why it's this instead of a globe yeah go for that yeah yeah oh what, yeah, what is yeah, your yeah. Okay, let's, let's 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 do the obvious ones because i'll, I'll go with what the uh, the community does on a regular basis and like you say it's a pressurized system why do people run have to carry oxygen with them when they go to the top of a mountain because it's a pressurized system. The pressurized system still gets thinner. You know, it's still just because it's a pressurized system doesn't mean it doesn't get thin as you go up. I mean, no, 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 no different than water. It, gas will naturally even out in a system. It will all end up the same. Same pressure all around. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, it's kind of like water. I mean, like water pressure. When you're 10 feet under, you're fine. If you go a thousand feet down, you're dead. Why? Gravity. Well, it's the same water that's up here that's down here. It's just more of it. Atmospheric pressure, pressure just gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Gravity is pulling question, the gravity is pulling the water down. That's why it's gravity. Okay, okay. If you want to go down the gravity road, tell me exactly what gravity is. But before you do that, you're going to have to talk to a few scientists because the best scientists in the world will all say the same thing, which is gravity. They can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms of gravity, like that. Now, just because this fell to the floor doesn't mean that's entirely gravity. It could also be density. It could be also be buoyancy. With the same thing where you take a ball and you put it underwater, why does that ball pop back up? Well, buoyancy, the, the, the actual equation of buoyancy, if I'm not, if I'm correct, actually includes gravity. It includes. I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that gravity doesn't exist. I'm saying that gravity only has a small part of that. And if you want to get into, you want to get into the, the gravity versus the vacuum of space, Tell me where gravity wins, because I could give you a, a perfect example, not not just the soda example. It's like when you take a soda and you suck it with a straw, you just used a partial vacuum from your mouth and you beat gravity that was in that that was in that cup. How did you do that? I'll take it one step further. Let's say there's a second story to your room right now. You probably heard maybe if you heard some of my interviews. Which is you take the second story and turn into a vacuum chamber. You put a cork in the center or whatever you want. You pop it. What happens? Well, the air from where you are right now instantly goes. It instantly equalizes. It's a fraction of a second. It's not like the movies. The problem with you that is, though, the, the problem with that is what you're doing is you're creating a negative pressure above this area, but it's also surrounded. Yeah, yeah but it's also surrounded outside the house. And all. You're creating negative pressure inside a pressure inside the. The difference yeah, is yeah, yeah. it fades a away. I am. So what's the difference? What's the difference when you walk outside? Why is our atmosphere still here? And if you come back and say gravity, I say, oh, you mean the exact same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room is going to keep it on the ground instead of going straight off into space. Yeah, but you're not understanding what I'm saying. That's because. There oh, is... I'm knowing exactly well, what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're trying to make up a barrier where there is none. And that's the big thing here. It's, it defies thermodynamics. Pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier cannot cannot happen in, never in has atmosphere. happened Can... in an atmosphere yes in an atmosphere but not when it comes to space it generally fades away gravity will as you move up or gets thinner like we are quite so lucky the, we are so very, very lucky so, if you hang about so we again, get science, lucky. if you're hanging about can never... go <laughs> ahead no you go on ahead no, 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 I'm just saying that the scientists cannot tell you. When I say, where is the bleeding edge of space? You're going to say, oh, it's at five, 600 miles. I go, tell, tell me exactly what happens at the bleeding edge of space, where our atmosphere ends and space begins. Tell me what happens there. But tell nature, me because you're, you're going to say at some point there's this static point where there's nothing happening, where vacuum is sitting there and the atmosphere is sitting here. Man, man, granted, it's thinner, a few particles, and that vacuum has no effect on those small amount of particles. Never happens. It's it, it, it's a gradient. It gradually. It, it doesn't matter if it's a gradient. The vacuum has nothing. Eventually, the gradient is going. You're talking about. Remember the bleeding edge. Let's call it the edge of space. The edge of space where those little particles are sitting next to a vacuum. Eventually, the vacuum is going to rip those things off and just take them away. If you ask many like they a do different down person, here. lots of different people will give you different heights specifically because there is no definite border. Why not? Well, why would there be? Well, why, why is there no definite border? I mean, what, what I'm saying is it works way better in this than it does with the globe model. Way, way easier. Meaning, you know, it just it just gets thinner and thinner until it gets to whatever the barrier is at the top. So, like, for example, if you take helium gas, perfect example, you take a balloon and you let it go and it flies up. Why? Partially because of gravity, partially because of density. The balloon goes up and up and up and up and then finally it bursts. And then the helium molecules keep going up and up and up. What do they do? Eventually just get to the bleeding edge of space and stop? 
or do they just go off into space? Because if they go off into space, well, there's your atmosphere problem. Well, I, on that specific example, I wouldn't know, but I, I'm sure we could find out exactly yeah, right down to it. It's not my particular you might be field. You might be able to dig up something from the, from the textbook, but that's not even our best example. Our, I mean, it's a good example. It's probably our number two. Put the number one example, I mean, not just gravity versus the vacuum of space. And by the way, anyone that's listening to this and you want to look it up yourself, you want to look up how strong, you know, why the vacuum will always win. Always, always, always look up a wonderful videos. We didn't make them. The Germans made them uh, called uh, vacuum car versus um, I'm sorry, vacuum versus steel rail car where they apply a vacuum field just to the inside. And it's not even close to a full vacuum to the inside of a steel rail car, not aluminum. And it's just violent. It's just so instant and so powerful that it's, it, there's no doubt to me at, at all. What, you know, when it gets to space, it's just never, ever going to happen. Anyway, let's get to the, the big one, though, because the big one is the one that probably 80 percent of the flyers community goes and does. And that is the long distance photography. Mm -hmm. by far and away. In fact, it wasn't even my idea. I had nothing to do with in the clues. It wasn't in the documentary. We, even though we showed them tons and tons of stuff in the documentary, they would refuse to use it, which is the curvature of the earth, eight inches per mile. And I don't care past 500 miles. We're talking about less than 500 miles, more that, than 500 that miles. A, I know you... that, that equation has been, it, it's, that's for engineering. It's a rough thing. It's not for measuring the curve of the earth. It does fall down after a certain point of time. And you do, you're right, but under 500 miles, which is fine for us, it does work. And, and, and if you come back and say, well, no, you can't use eight inches per mile squared. I will say, fine. What is it? If it's not eight inches per mile squared and it wouldn't matter anyway, because the stuff we're that I'll, I'll talk about here in a second goes way beyond that, which is if we'll just say hypothetically, doesn't matter if you agree or not, mm -hmm. eight inches per mile squared, because we didn't come up with this. We didn't pull it out, pull it out of our ass. No, but the know, people who have the people who have come up with it and do use it say that it's for engineering and you're using it wrong. The people who do and have oh, again, again, not not to put you on the spot, but OK, fine. If it's not eight inches per mile squared, what is it? Well, I don't know because it's not my there field. There you go. Just because you go. I we, don't we, know it, though, we, because I don't know it doesn't mean that it's not out there. No, but you're not the only one. No one. I've asked that question to tons of people. I say, fine, if it's not eight inches, what is it? And they say, well, they just absolutely just go off into the weeds. Like, well, it's a it's a variable thing based it on is, level. It is, like, but, the, but it is, though, man. Relative to where you are and moving about and height, there's so many things to take oh, yeah, into yeah, yeah, consideration. Yeah. We, we got it. We, no, we know more about that than just about anybody <laughs> because we started, you know, looking at this thing. So at one foot off the water, for example, wonderful videos have been put out uh, by you guys on your side of the pond, but even though they're the ones that are analyzed it, but most of the really, really good footage that's been shot recently is out of California. You look at oil rigs, perfect example, because those aren't boats. Your boats are moving, you know, floating on the water and, and you're shooting it from, sometimes you're shooting it from, uh, you know, a foot up, maybe six feet up, maybe eight foot up. Let's just go with a foot, right? Foot off the water, minimize, you know, the, the distance. Shooting a foot off the water, one's at six miles, one's at nine miles right? That's not the problem. You know, the problem, well, obviously you can see them perfectly clearly. No, the problem is, is that you can see the horizon behind them. And that's where you and, run into problem. And, and this Everything is just photography. Kind of, we could go back and forth about pulling photographs up. I could pull up stuff from this isn't rhetoric. a photograph. This is video. This is live video. Yeah, we could do the where same. We, we could go back and forth, like you know, with that. Have this you is, done there's no back and forth on this. The horizon cannot be behind the objects. They cannot be. If you, if you say what, because eventually you're going to say, well, the curve is in front of them. You'll show me boats that'll say, oh yeah, this boat's cut in half because of the curvature. And I go, and yet the curvature cannot, you know, it's not cutting off these, these oil rigs. In fact, the curvature is behind it. And people will say, oh, it's refraction. It's Fata Morgana. It's, you know, atmospheric lensing or whatever you want to talk about. It's like, no, the curvature cannot, the horizon cannot be behind the objects. They cannot be. And that's and that's one of our diehard things. Right. Eight inches well, per month. Just for talk sake, I'll grant you that. Take, t just for talk sake, we'll grant you that, right? What okay. is the purpose? Who made it? What's behind it? What, like, you know, is there aliens up there watching us or, you know, what? No, you mean the aliens are going to show up in about a week? Yeah, probably. So, because <laughs> I absolutely, by the way, the, the coronavirus, I absolutely think is, is just a precursor for something else. I think there's something way, way bigger coming along. But 
when it comes to who made it and what's behind you know what's on the other side of this thing yeah, is there other domes it? out there are we on a shelf with 50 other domes or you know is there sure, nothing out not? there or sure yeah. sure sure i mean we're this is not a one-off not not by a stretch you know you would never just make one of these things i mean not only are we the not the the first people to we're not the first people to rent this apartment but there you wouldn't have just one of these now is there space outside of this probably probably not but there could be more of them yeah absolutely why do you hide it though what's the big deal why keep it a secret um the, the big problem is when we discovered it meaning what i'm saying is yeah we're in a building but nothing to do with hiding it, right? Obviously, they want to hide it. If there's government out there and we're inside a dome and they would want to hide it, they would want to hide it. But what's the purpose of the dome? That That's... Oh, 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 wow. You're really getting into it then. Okay. No, um, I, I want to know, you know, from that point of view, like, what is the purpose of the dome? And to just the, make it the through purpose, the corner? If, if it was me, why build it? Why yeah. build something like this, right? Okay. You want to cut to the chase? I'm, I'm impressed, by the way. Most people don't even get that far. Which is, okay, why build it? Why, why keep this thing? uh going for me it it comes down to oof, it's gonna be kind of a kind of heady for well, some people just listening to, like giving you a heads up man we have people in the audience who are christian we have uh, an audience member who does believe that god is an alien we also have an axe nasa shill and uh, we also have a flat earther <laughs> as well so we have multiple okay, people okay, in the audience okay so if if the reason why you would build something like this for, okay forget about hiding it forget about you know if the government figured out would they hide it yes of course they'd hide it um, and we, by the way, you, you reason why the big reason why you'd hide it is because if you didn't even discover it until almost 1960, when you finally had the technology to, it's like, well, civilization's already been built, but why build something like this? Yeah. You build something like this because the universe runs off of novelty. How's that? Uh, meaning, <laughs> uh, it's a bit nuanced. You need to go a wee bit more. <laughs> okay 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 no, no let's let's take it for so everything in this world seems to be built on conflict it's almost inescapable it doesn't matter how rich how powerful how beautiful how talented you are you always have something to complain about always 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 i mean if you're if you're rich you're always complaining about money and your servants if you're talented you're always worried about the guy coming up behind you if you're beautiful you're always looking in the mirror wondering if you're going to get a wrinkle and so on and so on and so on. It's weird. It doesn't matter how successful and how powerful you become. You're always you're always worried. You're always in conflict about something. And and at the very least, if even if you got everything you going for you, there's always mortality sneaking up behind you. You're not going to be able to escape it. I don't care if you're a monk, you know, hovering, you know, in the mountains in the Himalayas. You're going to be worried about something. Something's going to catch up with you. So if that's the case, then the world outside of this. And I do believe, I absolutely believe in an afterlife. I do believe in other dimensions. Uh, and that is that the world outside of this is unlimited. And if you want to call it heaven or nirvana or Shambhala or whatever, whatever, that's fine. But it's an unlimited universe. So if this is 99% conflict, then whatever's outside of here is 99% unlimited. Meaning you can do just about everything you want. Well, what do you mean that's by a problem everything? with that. You know, is it... So you're talking multiple dimensions, no physical body. We can fly about. We can do this and the other. Or are you well, talking? Well, I mean, about... you might have a physical body, but it wouldn't be the same as this one. I mean, you wouldn't have internal organs and probably just a shell, no different really than a video game body. I mean, a video game body looks exactly like we do now, but there's nothing on the inside of it. It's so still you would be more per a proponent of like uh, simulation theory, or would you actually say you believe in a god? I do believe in God. Absolutely, I do believe in God uh, at the highest level. Uh, but I also do believe that God was a programmer. You know, we we tend to express our the details of God depending on what level of civilization that we have. So, you know, back in the day, it was a magic hammer and a magic chisel, or he molded things out of clay. And then, as things went along, you know, God became more and more advanced. And now, I mean, come on, we didn't invent programming. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, but if we were created, then God like probably has like programming has just been an advancement from what we stand on before. You know, it's like we, we are what we what came before us. Programming is just like a computer used to be the size of a room. It's not. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And what's what's interesting for me, not to get into um, simulation theory too much, but what's interesting to me is now we are starting to detect things in our reality which mimic what we've been designing in simulations uh you know not to rip off too much from the the two movies from the late 90s um the matrix and the 13th floor Brilliant 13th movie, floor by the way was 13th um, movie. Um, yeah i love yeah, that which, movie that was a movie 
That was a movie that was based off of a 1975 German film called World on a Wire, which was built based on the 1960s book called um, uh, Simulcron 3, which, you know, and, and it's been talked about ever since we started de de devising computers, which is, OK, what if we created a simulation and we couldn't tell the difference, you know, between our simulation? And we we're running into that now. There are things right now that we are we are finding out that two things, uh, most notably the double slit experiment, which was basically perfected like 15 years ago. Double slit experiment says that, you know, whatever you're not looking at doesn't exist. And we're seeing that with single electron gun experiments. I don't think that that wordage is correctly. I, I don't think you worded that correctly. I think you're using colloquial terms there, but I don't think that's worded. I don't think they say it doesn't exist. OK, I, all, right, all right. Sorry. You know what? That was for your audience. But uh, you're right. It doesn't exist. It's an approximation. It's a... You look at all the possible sites of where it could actually possibly be. And then when you do the test, it will be... Yes. Know, there's a probability. Yes, absolutely right. Yes. Wa the, wave, the wave versus particle the is the cat function. dead, is yes. the cat alive. Where does so the wave so. function break down? Right, right, right. But again, interesting that we are seeing that now. And the, the old question, you get, because that's what we do. It's conservation of resources in programming, which is what we do in programming. Which is, okay, if your character is never going to be on the other side of that mountain, do you draw the other side of that mountain? No. No, you don't. Because he's never going to be there. It'd be a waste. So, in fact, you don't even draw the other side of the street. where It's called, um, like, flashlight graphics. So, wherever, wherever you're looking, that's lit up. But whatever's behind you, it's just black. You know, because why would you draw it? So, well, that, the, the other one that I love... The other way, you know. The what? They've looked into... The, right. For you to build a computer of a simulation of this, we're using the technology we have at the minute. It's planet-sized computer to cover everybody and do the rest of it. It's planet-sized computer. But potentially, the, potentially, sure. yeah. Quantum computing could well, it also depends. Quantum computing can possibly possibly change that. If you well, actually also, go into that, and why would you, as you say, if you could create one, why would you stop with one? You'd end up creating loads of them, and that you can go down the route of saying taking into account simulation theory is real. Mathematically, the probability is there's probably a better probability we are in a simulation than a real one. The, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just... You're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. In fact, I, I talked about that in the last chapter in my book, which was I would love for, for people to, to get on board with the simulation theory. Unfortunately, you have to spend time... I mean, I grew up in the video game industry. I mean, I played video games for a living and right. you know, I, I taught proprietary software for We've years. We've started to tangent off here, right? Taking simulation theory, simulation theory makes that everything's in a computer, right? So if it, everything's it, in it a computer, makes... yeah, basically, if everything's in a computer, why put a dome over the top of it? Back to this. The, oh, no, 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 the... because simulations, <laughs> oh, I got you on this one, because all simulations are a freaking box. In fact, it's not even a dome. It's a simulation of a dome. Um, all simulations are basically a box. Uh, you know where you would fit something you would you would pretend that there was a dome inside it and the reason is because computers um as you know, you know they they don't like curves everything's right angles computers can't really draw circles they draw something that looks like a circle but when you zoom in it's just a bunch of right angles and in fact the when you're drawing a when you're doing a simulation because all video games whether or not and this is for anyone that still plays video games i i'm trying to get off of it right now but if you, regardless whether you play Warcraft or Fortnite or Minecraft or GTA or something like that, it's all built on a perfectly flat box system, meaning it's just a it's a big box. The terrain is perfectly flat, and the the, the sky is just this big. It's called a skybox system where they can simulate anything you want, curved objects, and they make it seamless to where it looks. You could you can simulate a dome if if you wanted to. It's the same but, with the Earth and the globe being as big because it's so big relative to the size of us. It does look completely flat as you go along. But it that does. Looks, it looks, it, but it, what it looks like and what it is, you know, oh, our, our, well, our own eyes how? and our own senses can't be trusted. Well, yeah, but then I have you a leak, get... I have a leak at the minute with my oil tank, and after the third day, I stop smelling it. My woman came in over the weekend, and she goes, what the fuck is that smell? Our senses cannot be trusted. You're right. The, the, human, the human senses can be fooled very, very easily. In fact, it was almost like we were designed to be fooled. Um, a perfect example would be, in fact, even, even before HD, you could watch like a, a first person roller coaster thing on television and some people would get ill. I mean, I had a hard time playing freaking Mario Kart without getting dizzy. Um, why? Because it just seems like we're, we're, we can be, you know, sucked into whatever the illusion is. But to be to back to your reality. point there, because I've, I've had people say, oh yeah, I can see the, like the side to side curvature, not the, not the forward and back, but they, they say, oh, I can see the side to side curvature from an airplane. 
Oh, I can see it from um, uh, a mountaintop. I can see it from a beach. And it's like, that's fine. And normally I would just send them a, a video of a weather balloon from 120,000 feet, which show, shows it tabletop flat. But now I just go to, to a Neil deGrasse Tyson clip where he was on stage at the uh, South by Southwest festival a couple of years ago. And he was actually, he was re it was interesting because he was angry about the whole Red Bull jump. If you remember that from a few years ago, you yeah, know, Red I, Bull. I, yeah, your boy, I thought that was fantastic. The hers in the back of my end actually stood up when I watched it and I must have watched it a million times, man. But I... uh, again, it was really cool that he jumped from 130,000 feet. Super great. But the, the footage was absolutely dishonest and Neil deGrasse Tyson called him out on it. He's going, yeah, 130,000 feet, you can't see the curvature at all. And it's like, what are you talking about? Red Bull showed this. I've talked to media guys, you know, guys that publish this on their websites. And I go, why are you using that huge curvature fisheye lens for the shot for the Red Bull? You know full well it isn't that. Even if there was a curvature, it's not going to be that severe. I mean, the, the whole world would be 100 miles wide. And they said, well, it's a good shot. It's, it's a more dramatic shot. Yeah. And I go, why why are you using it then so but the point was the neil point tyson is, says the, 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 okay same as why you would do movies and things they've got to get a big effect to get people to get my hands to stand the hers and my back of my arm to stand up and in uh yeah i get but it they didn't I, come I out and say it. That, that, you know they're not a doc well it is a documentary but they're not there they were focusing on one thing not the other like i've seen with, similar footage with uh i was going to say brian may it's not brian may it's the guy that looks like brian may that used to be in top gear what do you call him no, no, that is Brad, that, James, her, May. He's James been, May. Uh, James May. And he's James been May. up in that, you know, in a plane. And the curvature yep. that he's seen at that height was nowhere near the same as what I've seen in that. Well, the, the, uh, that's my, my point is, is that Neil Tyson says, remember, he is the most, no offense to Brian Cox, your guys' guy. But Brian Cox would probably say the same thing. I hope he would say the same thing, which is Neil says, yeah, you can't see the curvature from 130,000 feet. So if James May saw it from less than 100,000 feet, but here's the bigger one. I have had thousands, thousands of people come to me and say, I saw the curvature from an airplane. And you could probably hook them up to a liar detector test and, and yes, maybe they'd pass. I, I've been lucky enough to actually talk to a pilot. There was a regular customer in the last depot I walked to was a, a, yeah. a pilot that flew around the world and yeah you definitely there, he has said there is definitely a curve now i'm not going to uh, well go then i he would i would put any of my what 15 pilots up against him that's what and i'm going to say we're going to come back and forth and we're going to boil down to what have you got and what have i got you know all right that's fine the anyway design uh, behind, so right? if it's my, being my designed if it's being designed who and there's you believe in god is the designer i do i do and i and i do believe it was designed by god it was absolutely not designed by us the engineering techniques even if it was a simulation well we it was were simulation designed we're as we are now you, you would be a what? proponent of intelligent design that we were designed as we are now or we were designed and then evolved or are you against evolution oh no 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 no, no. i think we were i think we were designed as we are now um i think the carbon dating system is absolutely a crock it's um, limited carbon, i don't carbon it, dating is limited carbon dating let me, let me give you the, the my, my favorite example dating. radiometric dating co covers everything well uh, let, let me give you my, my my favorite my latest favorite which is um uh in fact this is up in your neck of the woods so if somebody says oh by the way you know there's there's dinosaurs swimming around loch ness <laughs> and you'd say oh no obviously not because dinosaurs have been extinct for at least 100 million years and then i come back and say okay we'll explain the coelacanth fish exactly Coelacanth, C-O-E-L-A-N-C-A-N-T-H. Coelacanth fish. Really ugly, multi-finned fish. Uh, the fossil records dated, I don't know, 70 million years ago, dead. Super, super dead. Everyone would agree, every scientist in the world, every single one of them would have bet their freaking firstborn that this thing was dead. Gone for 70 million years. And then the British military caught one off of uh, South Africa. And then somebody else caught one off of Madagascar, and then Mozambique, and then National Geographic ended up swimming around with them. The point, and then so then I come back and, and I say, are there any, but is it possible that any dinosaurs survived and they're swimming around Loch Ness? Well, again, you see where it's going, yeah, right? I see where you're going, but How, if you took that coelacanth fish that existed so long ago and you take the coelacanth fish that existed now, they would not be able to, they're just, their morphology is the same. Their genetics are not the same. Another same point fish. Being, another point being they could have been living at a very low population and then something happened that they were able to boost their population and then all of a sudden they start to appear all over the place because they, you know, maybe a, a new food source arrived or something like that to give their population a growth that made it easier for us to find them no no i got you i got you it's it's a nice idea it's a nice idea however i know but these, these are the, just the, you, you all you, i'm asking you for evidence man you're just saying 
you know, you're just saying. Like, I'm just saying that that fish was dead, and I would have every scientist. Here's the thing: if that fish would have been more elusive, you could have gone all the way to today, 2020, and if some fisherman would have, you know, would have, you know, dangled it in front, you know, on some video, scientists would have, oh, that's totally fake. It's Until totally they, not. Real. Yeah, they would the have scientists said that's fake. They would have said that's fake, and then they would have went out and investigated it, as you say they did, and they found more. So that is why it's we have the confirmation that they are now back. It, We're not okay, taking one but, guy's but, word for but, it. But that's my point. Science, he goes along with the, the same, I'll use Neil Tyson one more time, where, where Neil said that science is true whether or not you believe in it, period. And it's like, I, okay. just phrases, man, but he is not the authority. He is a communicator. He is he, a science he is communicator. He science god. No, he he's not. Not to me. He's a science priest. communicator. My, my favorite is, scientist out there is Max Tagmark. I, you know, he's Max Tagmark. Nobody knows no. him. Hmm? There are three, there are three media scientists in the world. I don't care if they know him or not. The, well, the media does. <laughs> there are three. But it doesn't media give him authority. Neil Tyson, Brian Cox, Michio Kaku. That's it. Three media scientists in the whole world. If they're not saying it, nobody cares. But it doesn't matter whether they say it or not. It doesn't yeah, make it, does. it true. No, no, no. Just to the population and just to people around, but not actually to the what is going on in the real world. Like if Neil deGrasse Tyson came out tomorrow and said the world's flat, so instantly everybody would believe that the world's flat. Yep, they would. They absolutely oh. are you kidding come on the coronavirus they told people that the sky is falling and the united states is shut down and we have what 300 people dead 300 people in in a country of 330 million that that's, doesn't even make sense we come on capacity. did we believe we, we broke capacity we, we broke capacity on our icu beds as of yesterday and my local hospital had a uh, 240 foot containers delivered chilled in preparation I, for the I'm dead not, bodies. I am not saying that people aren't getting sick. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the death toll, I'm not being callous when I'm saying this, the death toll isn't nearly high enough, not even remotely high enough to cause this sort of hysteria. Yes, people getting thing, in ICU It doesn't beds, work, man. Great. Germs and things like that and viruses grow by an exponential rate and people don't realize until it's too late because it's, it's fucked at 60, day 60, that means it's half fucked at day 59. The first 40 days, you don't know that it's fucked. Everybody's walking around going, we're grand, but it's it's the build up. You know, you have to. It's the build up. It, it, sorry, the the, the st hysteria. It doesn't warrant. We, we there are no the way hysteria more is not things. warranted. I agree with you that a lot of the hysteria is not warranted. You know, people not should warranted. not be buying so much fucking toilet paper. It, they need to calm their fucking selves. How? Yeah. It, wash it, your hands. I know wash your face well, and all that, but. Yeah. We won't dwell. We won't dwell on this. But let me end that point with this, which is, yeah, you're absolutely right. How is it possible that there is no toilet paper in any store in the world right now, when at no point did anyone in the media tell anyone to go buy toilet paper? It just blows my mind. Because it's anyway. a media sensation, the same as other things. Probably some crazy people bought some. Then their mates put a picture on Facebook. Then a hundred people seen it, and it spread like wildfire. And then everybody panicked. Yeah, it's it's staggering to me. Anyway, what else you got? Uh, well, we're coming up on 45 minutes, so I'm going to throw questions out to the chat. And then if you're up for it, Mark, and hanging about, I'm going to invite a few people in back and forth. Sure. If you're grand with that. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, right. 10 minutes, people. Uh, throw us out a question from the chat. I'm going to ask Mark. Mark, out of all the flat earthers that's out there at the minute, not considering yourself, who's the best that brings people to you and who's the worst for turning them away? Wow. Now I have to play favorites. Um, the the guy that probably I've had the best relationship lately, is people that are bringing me uh, people would be um, uh, DITRH, which stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, um, mostly because he's the guy that actually went out and spent the time and built the app. You know, that it's really our only app that we have out there called the, um, the, the Flat Earth Sun and Moon Zodiac Clock. I and have heard of it. Through, through, through that, people have gotten to me, and because my my stuff's the one on one stuff, my stuff's the intro level, and so. But through through him, I've gotten I've gotten lots and lots of people. The per, the person that has turned the well, I, I'm not shy about saying it now, um, would be Eric Dubay because Eric, for whatever reason, you know, he was with you know with us back five years ago. He's got an ulterior motive, which is, you know, he's he's anti-Semitic, which is you want to be anti-Semitic, uh, you have that right. But don't don't mix it in with flat earth. It's like, you know, it's like, OK, I'm, he's going to make 20 flat earth videos and then how great Hitler is and then 20 more flat earth videos. 
it's, it's, it's like, dude, what are you doing? And we warned him time and time again. His channel was shut down many times. And uh, so I get more complaints about him than I than I do just about anybody. So, okay, how's that? we've got one question here. Uh, do, 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 do. How does the flat earth model explain a lunar eclipse? Oh, it's just lights in the sky. Um, a lunar eclipse can be done in a planetarium. So we're just talking about a bigger planetarium. That's that's all we're talking about. So, um, in fact, the solar eclipse could be done in, in anything. You know, we, it can't be done in a normal planetarium because you know the system's too bright. You know, for our technology. But anything from waxing and waning crescents to uh, you know how the planets line up, or the belt of Orion, or the Big Dipper, or whatever, that's just lights in the sky. That's that's all it is. Uh, people, I, I, now I'm going to name a couple of flat earthers that uh, would, I would say, get picked on in the community, but they're sometimes deserving of it because they're idiots. But <clears throat> uh, people like Daniel Pratt and Ranty Flat Earth, have you seen these people? People like Nathan Thompson, you know, doing these stupid, like the, these, these people. Like I've had a very cordial conversation with you. Obviously, we've had our back and forth, and we've talked over each other a few times, but we disagree, and that's the best thing about having yeah. a conversation. But these yeah. people are. Yeah, they are with Dan well. Dan Daniel Pratt, you know, he and I have ne ne never exactly been close. I've, I didn't really say anything bad about Daniel, um, but he he he's been in it for a while, and he started out with some great garage rants, <laughs> where he would sit in, the, in his garage and just get really really angry. Because when you first get into flat Earth, you get really really enthusiastic, and I mean, he's never been. He's kind of been on the outside looking in where he, you know, he didn't do the conferences and the meetups or anything like that. I don't, I don't really have a, a much of an opinion on, on Daniel Pratt. Nathan Thompson, <laughs> well, he, he's, he's a very, very interesting guy. I'm, I'm not going to say anything bad about Nathan because, well, one, one, he was in the documentary and uh, he, yeah. he had a chance to be on a, um, a reality television show recently. Um, would I have done what he did and, you know, get, you know, get caught, you know, yelling at the school yeah. children? Probably not. No. Not, not his best move. And he did get arrested for it. Will he do it again? Probably not. Uh, you know, what look, is your it's, thoughts uh, on the Netflix documentary? Uh, well, okay. So the Netflix documentary, I predicted everything I predicted in this case. Bob, Bob, came Nodell, true, which... Bob Nodell did, you know, he's. He did not look good in that. We will just say that because we know well, we agree right. and disagree. But Bob Nodell did not look good in that. And the journalism bit at the end is basically the a meme yeah, you, in the right. debunker thing now. Like, you the, know, it's... Couple, couple, couple things. The, um, the director hated us, absolutely hated us by the time it gets to the end. And not necessarily the people, but the community as, as a whole. Um, mostly because of me. And I'm sad about that because, you know, I got to spend seven months off and on with this director. Uh, but what had happened was, you know, that 12 year old kid asked me a question at the conference and they just turned on me, meaning the, um, the, the, the film team. It's like, how dare you, you know, you know, bring kids and I'm going, I didn't tell this kid to show up, but, but the point was they were going to take shots at Bob, you know, with, um, the, the laser gyro or sorry, the, um, ring, ring laser gyro. Yeah. And, um, with Jaron, with his laser experiment, I knew they were going to take shots. Um, however, would I have changed much about the documentary? Probably not. I mean, I would have changed the ending because I, I thought it was a cheap shot. It was a cheap but, shot, but it was bloody hilarious, man. It was well, it, well, it was, and that's why they that's why Come they made on, it that way. Yeah. I mean, and I sat with multiple. I went to multiple film festivals before this thing was picked up by Netflix, and you know, I sat in the audience and listen and watched them as they as they were doing this, and it, the reason why it did as well as it did. I mean, good lord, it had a lot of traction is because it, it flipped back and forth between both sides. It was like flat earther, flat earther, psychologist, flat earther, flat earther, scientist, flat earther, flat earther, you know, um, uh, astronaut and so on and so on. And so the audience felt safe. They, they felt it's like, okay, it's not a, it's not a preachy, preachy thing. And no one, the director, nobody in the film team, nobody in the producers team, none of them were flat earthers. And so when when you know when they would go up on stage and people would ask them questions, that was the first question, always, always, always the first question, which was, "Are you flat earthers?" And they said no, and the audience was like, "Oh, thank God," you know. And and but it it generated a huge amount of interest. And uh, I mean, I, I watched it gotten... once. I did watch it once. I've watched the 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 journalism bit and the Bob Nodell bits a couple yeah. of times. I thought the Logan Paul one was funnier, and I think Logan Paul is scum. 
but I thought his was funnier. I really do. Logan, Logan Paul, and I mentioned After this, we will go back to the chat. I've been ignoring the chat. I'm just letting the, the question okay. build up. So after your view uh, on the Logan Paul one, we'll Oh, yeah, yeah, chat. yeah. The, the Logan Paul thing, and I was the only person to walk out of the Denver conference when he showed up. He was a, he was the big secret. The, the promoter, he was told by Logan Paul. Robert was uh, all to, over him. The, was it oh yeah, if you, he was told he was told not to show up. At the, he was he was told not to tell anybody about the con conference that he was going to be there. I didn't even find out till twelve hours. You know, I was already there, and then they told me, and I go, it can't be him. And what was amazing was, I mean, I, I watch a lot of media and I absorb a lot of stuff. I was one of the only people in the conference that knew who he was because his demographic skews so young. Yeah, and you're right, he absolutely is scum. And so, and I and so I said he can't be him. I go, he's a horrible person. I go, he, you could, he couldn't be invited. He was going to actually go up on stage. And I, I told, well, I didn't tell anybody. I said, I basically made up my mind. I said, look, if, if I confirm it, it's actually him, I'm leaving. And I did. And I didn't do my set. And, and he came on. And, and, you know, three months later, he released that hour long thing, which was oh so awful. But I got vindicated <laughs> in the end. Cringy, because I said, but it was funny. It was super cringy, but it was. Right, oh, it we'll was... look at the chat. We'll look at the chat. All right. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. We've got one from well, Easyism. I want to know uh, why you can't fly if there's no gravity, but you're just going to say density or buoyancy. No, 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 no. I didn't say there was no gravity. I'm th saying you absolutely can. can uh, um, uh, and grab, by the way, density, it, the reason why you can fly, <laughs> one of the big reasons is because what you're, again, what we're breathing in here is is not nothing. You know, it's mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. You're basically kind of in a thin version of water. And the lift there, you know, no different really than submarines, you know, when they're when they're going around, we're just above that. That's well, I'll all. agree that fluid dynamics both describe air and liquid, but I wouldn't say that we're thin liquid. Uh, we have a question Hello. from Elias. We have Frankfurt to Atlanta and Johannesburg to Sao Paulo are both same distance and take nine hours. How can yep. they be the same distance on a flat earth? Don't know. I have no idea. Is there a super jet stream that we don't know about? Or is there something wrong with the map? Yeah, probably. We knew that since minute one, that there's something going on there. Uh, I always love the fact that people, and no offense to, to, to anyone in the chat room, I love the fact that people bring up, you know, a couple routes, you know, that, that you can go to nonstop, but everyone dismisses the fact that 90 something percent of the Southern Hemisphere flights have, are massively double connection, you know, double connections that start in the North. Uh, it just throws me, absolutely just throws me uh, that they just like, oh no, let's focus on that, but that's fine. Uh, we have one from Brian Bowden. Uh, how does Mark explain the recent Flat Earth video proving 15 degrees in our drift? I think he's making a reference to the Bob Nodell thing that was in that net. Yeah, yeah, the Bob Nodell thing. Uh, you, like, what, the, what is your opinion on that actual experiment? The the simple answer is, the, which, which is a question, which is, okay, what did the gyro prove? I mean, yes, was there a 15 degree um, per hour movement? Yes. So what was moving? The ground moving or was the sky moving? And we say it's the ground, and you say, oh, I'm sorry, we say it's the sky, and you say it's the ground. Play, plain and simple. Right. Well, that's all questions from the chat. Uh, it's coming up in the quarter past. We'll pop off for five minutes so everybody can take a pee break, and uh, I'm going to let the dog out. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, I'll just schedule this. And Mark, if you just want to let uh, – Mark's description for his channel is in the – Mark's description – Oh, I'm messing it up. Mark's channel is in the description. There you go. <laughs> uh, just type it. Just type in Flat Earth Mark into, uh, into YouTube. You'll find me. It's easy. Uh, Mark, if you want to just let everyone know or what you've got coming up or doing that and they got and I'll schedule this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there, uh, the book that just came out uh, is called Flat Earth Clues, End of the World. Funny title considering what's happening. Uh, the, the documentary is called Behind the Curve, which you can get anywhere. And uh, I've got a podcast on on TFR called uh, Strange World, and I'm, I'm not hard to find. Again, I, but don't look at just my stuff. There's tons and tons of people. Uh, if you're if you're new to Flat Earth, go to my channel, uh, and there's a playlist called Flat Earth Flat Earth Shortlist for new people, and it's got tons of people. You know, my my top 25 that's that's out there, and I update it on a regular basis. Does some videos are four minutes, some videos are an hour. There you go. There you go. Brilliant. Uh, the, I've scheduled it. It'll be on my homepage if anyone wants to go and get it. Or if one of my wonderful mods can pop it in the live chat. Uh, I have too many screens going. <laughs> too many tabs. <laughs> too many tabs. All right. So what do I do now? You do absolutely nothing, Mark. You just say bye-bye okay. and I'll run the outro. So everybody, okay. thanks very much for coming up. We'll see you back here in about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Not even that. And uh, yeah, appreciate you all coming. Lots of love. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.
Uh, no and way. your oh. attitude <laughs> pretty much proves that point. <laughs> you haven't read you haven't read any of the surveys, have you? Oh my fucking god. U.gov survey. Hey, done. what the fuck, man? Will you help me out, please? Or are you gone? <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you get your get it out of your system, you know. Scream and shout. Get oh, it's she way be out of her system. She hasn't even started yet. Oh. She's gonna have an aneurysm before this is over. Oh my goodness. You guys all know me as the bitch, but you haven't seen the actual bitch yet, okay? Okay. No. <laughs> Dave, have Look, you had anything I, you want I, to add? I don't, I don't blame you for being upset. I'm sorry, but there's going to be some casualties in this whole thing. And fortunately, your group is part of it. But nothing I can do. <laughs> Why are you so unwilling to learn basic science? Basic science. Go on. <laughs> Again, the, 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 the laughter and what is she... The, the laughter is not going to help. We, we've 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 seen the numbers. What, why do you think I'm on no, this? No, where, why, where do you think the doctor? The fucking what? math and the fucking science that is real. That's what Got helps. It. Got it. The math is real. It the is. math is irrefutable. You can't change it. It's a Got functional it. thing that works everywhere. Have we have it's we set not probes? Not a made to... up thing. We didn't make it up. We did. We just figured out did, how it works. Didn't say you made it up. Saying you oh made assumptions. God. You made leaps of leaps of faith. I, tell I me. Know. Tell tell me this. Tell me what the core of the Earth looks like. No idea. Why? How would we know? We can't dig down. Well, that's just it. You see, you show cross sections all the time of it and with ferns. the orange yeah. and yellow and yeah. white bands. Yeah. Perfect. Because, because we can deepest deepest hole it. ever deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles. Why are you showing us the cross section of the Earth? Because we can prove it. <laughs> how? Tell me how you can prove it. Seismic waves. Uh, yes. Fucking yes. yes, that works. Really? So you, you know, know exactly what the core there. of the Earth looks like? No, we don't know exactly what the core of the Earth looks like. But so, you know what it's made out of. It, how, how do you know what it's made out of if you've only drilled eight miles? Because we don't need to. Do we yes, need to know, yeah, I do. Do we need to yes. go to fucking uh, Jupiter to know what it's made out of? No. Do it, I need to go to the sun to know what it's made out of? No, who, I fucking know. Who says you went to Ju And I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm not. And I'm sorry you're here. But... Who says we You're went to Jupiter? The, the U.S. Okay. military? Have you seen the Apollo footage recently? It has aged horribly. Horribly. Shadows moving in multiple directions, even though there's one light saw source, no blast crater, a spacesuit that defies thermal dynamics, a radio transmitter that could not possibly go 250,000 miles in 1969 battery technology. What do you I mean, mean by this all day? What do you mean Mark, by defy Mark, thermal Mark, dynamics? You said that twice. Because I'm not going to argue the moon landing with you. I will not Mark, fucking do it. Well, Mark, then you I, lost. I, 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 Mark, I got, a, I, got a, I got a very serious question for you. Yeah, go. If you, if you, you know, forbid you, you get sick with uh, the coronavirus really, really bad, what are you going to do? Are you going to... Um, Try to fight it out and pray to God, or are you going to turn to science? <laughs> okay. I, and by the way, I'm not saying the coronavirus no question, isn't real. Real question. Look, look, real question. No, no, no. You know I'm not saying. Look, no, no. Like, no, no. I, I get you. Get sick, you could all die. So I'm asking you a really, really so honest You're buying question. into the no fear. Offense. You're buying look, into the I'm fear. Where are you, you anyway? I'm asking you a very, very honest question, and I want a very honest answer. If you're going to try to like start saying this conspiracy shit, then we have nothing to talk about. I asked you. Well, then why are you here? Because I, I'm, I am uh, conspiracy. Why are you here? I've just muted them. Just answer that one question, and then we'll. If I on. get, if I get the virus, hey, great. The chances of me dying right now are currently one in a million. The point literally he's trying to make is, one in a million. The point that, that Sal is trying to make is, if you would, if if there's science and medical science that can help you, why would you trust it now when it's you know I think showing a bias. Wait, 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 wait. How old are you? <laughs> me. Yeah. 51. Yeah, it's less than one in a million. There you go. You could no, no, no. no. I, by the way, I'm not the saying I hate science. It. I, 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 hey, look, we're talking on science. There's science all over the place. I'm saying that science makes... I'm saying that science makes leaps of faith like any other group. In fact, they become their own religion. No, we don't. The what? Absolutely not. Okay, science is true whether or not you believe in it. That's the no, statement I'm from saying, Neil Tyson. First of all, yes. It is. Science does not make mistakes. 
science makes lots no. of mistakes. Science uh, itself, what science makes up the world and everything? No, it doesn't. Science is Not incorruptible. We, out, we can be wrong. Yes. Right. Well, do, 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 do. Is, is, is science incorruptible? No. The method is incorruptible. The exactly. science itself is, is corruptible. Okay, that's good. I like that answer. So, if science can make mistakes and they're in, and they can be corrupted, why why can't we poke holes in it? Why can't we question it? You can question it, but except the moon landing. That's all you do. do all we do is question it. No, 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 no. Let me go back. So, so the moon landing—that's absolutely one hundred percent. You literally picked the one thing and I asked you not to talk about. <laughs> what are you talking? Why wouldn't I talk about it? That's one of the. We go after NASA every day. Every channel that we have goes after NASA. We have dedicated channels against NASA. Have you seen our T-shirts? I haven't seen a goddamn thing you do. I don't. But I don't waste Why are my you time here? with Why people are you like this. You I, don't want to be here because you don't I'm supporting be my friend. That's why I'm here. Oh, I'm so. sorry. You don't want to be introduced to flat Earth like this. Seriously. You no, don't. I know about no, flat Earth. No, I do. I'm just introduced? saying I don't go and watch your fucking channels or look at your T-shirts, please. That's a waste of time. You're a waste of oxygen. I'm do a waste you know of oxygen. What I do for a living. The what? Why? Why would I take time from that? To... Shit. Well, that's my point. That's my point. Look, if uh, and I was. Well, because I don't need to. I don't need to hear your arguments because I know the science and I know the math way down pat. You know what? If you want to question this shit, go and get your fucking degree, okay? And why, understand why, that. why? Because as soon as that point, I'm indoctrinated. <laughs> Once you get oh, your degree, you're lost. Please, How indoctrination oh, works. That's my dick, dude. Oh. <laughs> why is it you well, don't... Glad I'm not pushing yeah. your buttons. Seriously. Here's the question. Why What's are you question? unwilling to understand what is believed? It's a better question. Say that one more time. Why are you not willing to understand what the science says i understand fully what the science says i've been arguing with it for five years i know for i know what everyone's point is i get it i'm saying that it's in doubt now for a lot of things then why do you bring up things like not knowing what gravity is <laughs> when gravity is you don't know what gravity is you can only say what it does yes gravity is relevant. still a Gravity is a description. It's not right. Firstly, we understand gravity from a perspective of curvature of space and time. Okay. Do you have a spaceship? Have you gone out and checked out this space time stuff you're talking about? No, I've worked with the company that did. I knew people that did. Got it. Right. Got it. Oh. The point is not the point is not this. The point is you need to understand this to understand what gravity is and what we are measuring. Okay, it's all right and good to say there is density and there is buoyancy, but gravity acts against those things. I, by the way, I've never said at any point that I don't believe in gravity. I know that's a double negative, maybe, but, but I, I believe in gravity. I do, but I also think the buoyancy and a pressurized system play a part in this because it's a pressurized system. Okay, I'm gonna. Have you? Uh, I want to draw a thing, and you went. Um, you're almost certainly going to say no. Have you not seen the uh, de 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 demonstrations of water in a vacuum tube? Water in a vacuum tube. Probably, yeah. maybe not. Maybe I may not have seen that. Okay. Why? The point being, there are, I, I know, I, I only know of a few of them. They are because they're relatively niche engineering things. Okay, that, that can demonstrate in a clear tube where you have got water at the bottom and a vacuum at the top. Yeah, unfortunately, the tube is a barrier by definition it doesn't change the fact that the vacuum is at the top uh, actually actually it does and I, not, I know which i know which experiment you're talking about here and again if you have to use a tube it's over no, no, you, we you're, have you're to done to demonstrate it because of Wait. the pressure <sighs> we have to withhold the earth's pressure the air, air pressure to do the again which is which is why I came up with the the pressure thing above you. If you can't keep gravity in your room from going into a vacuum chamber upstairs, how can you keep the atmosphere anywhere? How can you do it? You can't use gravity because gravity didn't hold the air in your room. Did not do it. At what point you're going to say, "Well, there's a lot more gravity." No, it's the same gravity. You say, well, there's a lot more air, and it's it's weighted so, down. It's like, no, no, bleeding edge of space doesn't exist. You took the air 
out. The room is sealed. The, the, the gravity is, it's not even gravity, it's air pressure. It's, it's gravity is acting on the air pressure, on the air which is causing a pressure on around the entire house. Um, That's the point I tried to make on that earlier. You're, you're yeah. creating a negative system of air inside an already system. It's, it's... You, you keep trying to blame gravity for air pressure. As in, as in, for things that air pressure does. Even Why? <laughs> no. No. I mean, I, you're... If gravity can't keep... Okay, well, okay, again, vacuum chamber above me. Why doesn't the air stay here? Why? What do you mean, why doesn't it stay? Meaning, again, you can, you can, there's tons. We didn't make all these videos, but anything in a vacuum chamber, right? Why does it? Molecules, no molecules. Barrier. Without the barrier, it cannot stay there. No, it because, will. It will equalize. Because the air pressure will, will push it on. With so brownies, space. Air pressure will mix it all up and it will equalize. Ugh. Without a barrier. That's what happens. It's fine. If you don't have uh, a again, look, something away. Look, let, let's 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 cut this short. Nobody in this room is going to agree with anything I say, and I, of <laughs> course, have not and will not agree with anything with any guys you say. So, what's the ultimate goal here? Are you, are you trying to convince me of something? It's not going to happen. <laughs> we've we've it has been resonating too much. Went off. Yeah. To think. I was more intrigued as to as to. Uh, I'm trying to more get at things that you don't... I, I know, I know. You say that I don't understand science and that you've got all the facts and that science, again, science is right and you could prove without a shadow of the doubt, then why do we keep resonating? And you're going to say, well, because the public is dumb. And I'll come back and say, no, the public is easy. The public yes. wants easier explanations. If we Agreed. created a model that is easier to explain than your solar system, you've got a big problem on your hands. Because they're going to go with the easiest thing. They always will. Art of war. People are like water. They always take the path of, path of least resistance. For the Earth to exist, you require not having gravity functioning as it does. You'd... The problem is they don't understand gravity. But so. Most people don't. No, they don't. I agree. I agree. Um, it's hard. We, we don't, we're, not, we're not built to think in 3D. Every no, example, that's also true. Very, very true. What we have of doing gravity, we show it in 2D because that's all we can use to demonstrate it. That makes sense. So, uh, okay, I'll, I'll make it a little, let me give a small version of this. So let's take a little ball, I pretend I have a globe in my hand, covered in a little wisp of smoke, and you're in the space station. Yeah. And then you create a vacuum around it. Does that smoke stay on that ball? Yes. Oh, oh, that's a bold statement. You know full well it wouldn't. That smoke would be dissipated just like that, instant, violent. And by the way, why don't you guys ever complain when the movies get it absolutely wrong? Because we do. I mean, it's like you don't get sucked. There's not the um, this, this idea of a of, 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 of vacuum in space sucking stuff out. It would be slow. It would be unless you massively expose it slow have you not watched some of the stuff that's out there it's instant I mean, it's violent it. it's in a stuff on earth. 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 earth yeah that's not that's not the vacuum that's causing that that's air pressure that's causing that because there so, is a vacuum. so if you get a hole in the space station the size of like a nickel right it would say that, yeah. that it's you've you've got two minutes of air left and get the duct tape and you can patch it with a, a piece of material yes yes you, I, I, yes, okay. you can put your finger over it. You can. Bye, guys.